Hey guys, it is Easter Sunday as I record this, and if you're watching this on Easter, then happy fucking Easter to you. Today, we're going to be talking about solving systems of inequalities. So, there is an algorithm to do this. It, um, it's a problem that looks simple if you just are looking at a tiny example of it, but in the real world, it can, the, the, the input size of the problem can be too great to solve by eyeballing it or running through every possible solution. And so there does need to be some kind of an algorithm to solve this in, poly in polynomial time. There is, and we're going to be talking about that today. Now, when I say system of inequalities, I'm talking about, you know, the, uh, if, you, if you took linear algebra, you have the, uh, the standard equation AX equals B, where you have some matrix A multiplied by some vector X to give you a product vector B and it's your job to solve and find a set of solutions for this vector that work, basically. You'll be given something where you have, uh, you have some matrix A where basically in every row there will be one or two, like depending on how many X's you have, there will be one or two ones and negative ones. And you'll get a very simple equation to solve. And you'll get a system, and you'll find, it'll look like that. And then you'll have this over here, that's like x1 by x2, da, 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 down to xn. That's kind of what it'll look like if you're given it like that. And your job is to find a solution set for all the x's that is guaranteed to produce that. The problem here is that now we're not looking to produce exactly this. It's not that simple anymore. There's, there's always, of course, a simple way to solve for just an equal sign here. But if we have a, an inequality, the graph turns into, it's kind of a mess now, right? It turns into this. And then if we, as we add more and more inequalities, we just keep slicing. You know? So the solution set is, the possible solution set is very large. So we're just, looking, we're just looking first to see if it's feasible. Second, can we just find a solution set that works? And that is what we're going to do. So the way to tackle this, the algorithm to solve this in polynomial time, is to turn it into a graphing problem. And then use a shortest path algorithm to determine the solution set. At that point, turning it into a graph is obviously polynomial in terms of the size of the input. You run through the vertices, you, you run through your x's and you create vertices for each one. That just takes n. Then um, whatever shortest path algorithm we use will run at the speed of that shortest path algorithm, which it will be polynomial. So we'll have a polynomial plus a polynomial, which is polynomial. So what are we going to do specifically? First, we're going to create a graph, V and E, and our vertices are going to be vertices starting from 0 up to N. Now you notice that there's an extra vertex there, and that'll come up later. Our edge set is going to be edges VI to VJ such that XJ minus XI is less than equal to VK. So if you're given a set of problems like this here, this means that we are taking whichever, whichever x has the minus sign in front of it, and that is the directionality of the edge. So if we have xi minus xj, then it's xi with an edge going to xj in general for each one of these. less than or equal to bk, so whatever, so whichever b is associated with that, right? And then your edge weights, vi to vj, so for every one of these, the edge weight is just the given bk for that solution. So in this case, the edge weight here would be 2, and then here it would be negative 1, and we'll get to that as we do the example. Now, this extra vertex, this v0, because obviously we have vertices 1 through n for every x, but then we have this v0. v0 has an edge going out to every other vertex. It has an outgoing edge from itself to every other vertex, so it can't be part of the cycle. And every 
edge coming out from it has a weight of zero, so that it doesn't influence our shortest path algorithm. But it will be the source, guaranteed, for the shortest path algorithm that we're going to use. V0 is our source. So, now that we've got that out of the way, now that procedure has been honored, we can just get through a quick example. We're not going to be here long, actually. This is going to be a shorter video. So, let's create the graph. Hopefully you wrote down what was over here. <laughs> let's create the graph. First, we've got V0, right? We make that. That's there. And then how many do we have here? We're going to use this set of equations here. Oh, sorry, inequalities. We have one, two, three, four, four x's. So we need v1, v2, v3, and v4. Now remember, we're taking edges that come out from the x that has a minus sign in front of it. So in this case, we have x1 and x3. We know there's an edge between them, but which way is it going? It's going from x1 to x3. So we're going to do that to be safe. And it has weight BK, so 2. And here, same logic applies from x3 to x2 with weight negative 1. Here, same logic, x2 to x1 with weight 3. Here, x3 to x4 with weight 0, not bad. Here, x4 to x2 with weight 5. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll come around here so that it's easier to read. No, it's to save us uh, trouble here because we have to make these edges yet. So remember, v0 has outgoing edges to every other vertex, all with weight 0. And that is what our graph looks like if we take this and transform it into a graph. And now, first thing we want to do is determine whether or not this system is feasible. How do we, how do we tell if it's feasible? Well, if it has a negative cycle, then that means that we cannot find a solution set for these x's such that these inequalities always hold true. So if it has a negative cycle, we can write it off right away and say it's not feasible to find a solution set for this. So what shortest path algorithm would we want to use to check and determine whether or not a given graph has a negative cycle? That would be Bellman-Ford. So we're going to apply the Bellman-Ford shortest path algorithm on this graph, not specifically on this graph. We're not going to run through the entire application. What I'm going to do is I'll give you the solutions for it. Because if you've watched the other video, you've already seen me go through an exhaustive example of Bellman-Ford. I think it's a 20 minute video where I go through a whole thing and we do all of Bellman Ford on a graph. So we're not going to revisit that. And plus you may not even be asked to do it on an exam. What he may do is just ask you to do this step and show that you know how this works and then check, just eyeball to see there's a negative cycle and then he'll ask you, is it feasible? You'll say yes. Or no, and then he'll ask you, what would you have to change? Or something like that. It's all going to be eyeballing it and doing mental arithmetic. Um, but anyway, we're going to apply Bellman Ford with our source vertex V0. And in the end, when you get so if you did watch the video that I did on Bellman Ford, the far right column, the last column that I populated with data values, those are the shortest paths to every node from your source vertex. Those values are the solution set. So it would look something like this. You'd have, we have four x's, so we're going to have four deltas in the end. Four shortest path values. And they're all going to be coming out from v0. v0 to v1. v0 to v2. v0 to v3. And from v0 to v4. And if you were to run Bellman Ford on this, what you would get would be 0, negative 1, 0, and 0. Obviously, because in this case it's a very simple graph. 
And just think of that as your solution set working right down. So if you have V1, V2, V3, V4, then that means that this is your solution to X1, X2, X3, and X4. And that would be, that would be you done. That would be you done. Um, there are different versions of this question that you might get asked on exams or in interview questions. Um, but I think we covered them. Either you'll be asked to actually run Dalman Ford, in which case that's fine, you just run Dalman Ford and then you get your answers. Or, if he's not going to ask you to run Dalman Ford, uh, what he'll do is just have you eyeball the graph and determine whether or not there's a negative cycle. Like in this case, the only negative number is right here, so we know that we're going from V1 to V3 to V2 back to V1. There's a cycle that's obviously not negative, so there is no negative cycle here, so it's feasible. And that would be your answer there. Or you would find a negative cycle, and he might ask you a question like, what value would you have to change in order to make it feasible? Or an another version of the question that I've seen is, um, what would be the smallest value to which you could change a given edge weight uh, to make the system feasible? And in both cases, it's just eyeballing it and doing some quick mental arithmetic. The the most cumbersome version of this problem is definitely having to run Bellman Ford, although honestly I've never actually seen a given problem where you had to run Bellman Ford on the graph. The most important part here is knowing this step. And if you watch this video, then you know it. And as far as I know, there are no other videos on this, spe this specific subject on YouTube, so, so congratulations. You made it. You know the trick to solving a system of inequalities in, po in, uh, in polynomial time. Uh, this has been great. I hope you guys had a happy Easter, assuming that you're watching this even anywhere around Easter. Um, up next, dynamic programming. I'll see you next time.